Hello everyone, my name is Georgiana Uliaric and I am the Frederick S. Eaton Curator of Canadian Art at the Art Gallery of Ontario. And I am very pleased to talk to you today about a very intriguing work in our collection, Marianne Dale Scott's The Jade Plant. We're very fortunate to have received this work uh, in 2011. It was a group of works we received from the Elizabeth and Tony Comper collection, which is a collection with a very significant focus on the work of women artists, in particular modern women artists in Canada. And in this group of works that we received along with the Jade Plant uh, were a number of watercolors by Peggy Nichol McLeod, who was a very close friend of Mary and Dale Scott um, until uh, Peggy Nichols' death in 1949. And I like to call out this friendship because it was really a very key friendship for both of them. It, uh, it was a friendship that sustained them and supported them as they were going through art and life and motherhood. And their letters in particular, their correspondence, speak so much to their ambitions and their struggles as artists, as wives, and as mothers. And I love to think about the two of them and how important this friendship was as they painted together in the early decades of the 20th century. I am particularly fascinating by, fascinated by this painting um, of the most common of things. And that is a house plant. This jade plant, uh, like all jade plants that, that uh, we have in our homes, it was originally from South Africa and Mozambique and has spread around the world since the 19th century as one of the most familiar of house plants for a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, it is beautiful and very satisfying to look at, to have in your home um, with these succulent leaves and smooth and shiny texture. And as almost anyone who has had a jade plant will tell you, it is nearly impossible to kill. In fact, uh, if you give it too much water, it can do its harm. So it really requires very little attention. In addition to that, it's very easily propagated. Simply from a cutting, a new plant will grow. Uh, so all of these factors have really contributed to its spreading around the world and its great popularity. Yet what we're looking at today is no common depiction of this very common plant. Marion Dale Scott was born in Montreal. Uh, she studied in Montreal and then she went to the UK uh, to Slade School. And upon returning in 1926, uh, she was kind of frustrated with her experience in London. Uh, but as she returned on the boat, as she was coming into the St. Lawrence, she was filled uh, with, with great new optimism, feeling that there's in fact everything to paint. And in Montreal, uh, she joined a group of artists who were deeply uh, devoted to artistic expression that was rooted in social engagement. Um, and and this was also something that she deeply held along with her husband. She married Frank Scott in 1928, who was a poet and a professor of law who founded the, um, the League for Social Reconstruction, uh, which was a group of left-wing intellectuals in Montreal and then beyond who demanded economic and social change. And indeed, this is what Marion Dale Scott sought to do in her own painting, in particular in her 30s. These are values that she held very dear, dearly. Um, as she put it, she sought to create in her painting, simply put, a revolution. In the 1930s, Scott had been rethinking her approach to painting and in particular her subject matter. Up until now, she had painted landscapes, urban scapes, indeed she had painted flowers before, uh, but she was beginning to rethink her approach and, and indeed the, the, the choice of subject matter that she had because she believed that an artist philosophy comes through in the painting. As she put it, I want to achieve something simple and direct with emotional content. And in her paintings of flowers in particular, she wanted to reach that precarious balance between abstract and content. And this was a sort of ongoing discussion in the 1930s, issues of abstraction, representation, what is the role of painting, what is the role of artist? These were key issues for um, Marianne Dale Scott and, and many artists in Canada and in fact in the United States and the world. But here in the jade plant, uh, what we're looking at and recognize almost right away is the great and profound influence that American painter Georgia O'Keeffe had on Marion Dale Scott. And in her journals from the time, she speaks of her admiration for Georgia O'Keeffe. Indeed, uh, she has correspondence with Peggy Nicole McLeod, who is also very well known for uh, 
or her paintings of flowers, um, in which they exchanged their admiration for O'Keeffe. Indeed, uh, Marion Dale Scott said, let Georgia O'Keeffe be my godmother. And the similarities when we imagine Georgia O'Keeffe paintings, which of course are quite well known, um, they're, they're quite profound. We see this close up from above and we recognize the plant and yet we also recognize that something quite extraordinary is going on. There is simplification of form yet the detail is accurate. So for example, when we're looking at the leaves and we recognize them as jade plant leaves but also as these just beautiful ovoid forms, the red edge around the leaves, um, as much as it adds compositionally and and creates echoes within the painting. It is also accurate because a jade plant that has received too much sunlight will begin to develop this edge of ochre, red, brown around the very edge of the, of the leaves. Scott is interested in sort of reducing the use of color. She has this ochre and this green, bluish green, and pretty much she keeps to these two colors. Um, and as we're imagining, uh, as, as we're seeing these leaves, we can almost imagine them as propellers and yet there's nothing mechanical about them. So she's speaking of something that's organic and natural and yet she's also speaking of something that could be industrial of her age, very much about progress. And her composition is just as she has stated for herself, it is direct and it is simple. These symmetrical leaves, are um, spreading from the stem and they fill the picture plane in this circular composition. All of it contained in this translucent oval shape, this ovoid shape, uh, this whitish shape um, that contains the composition, makes, makes it very tight, but at the same time also provides a really important highlight contrast that brings out the leaves and the forms. And all of it seems to culminate in this small red ochre circle, the circle that uh, appears to be so powerful, so poignant, and really indeed the source of the emotional content that Mary Dale Scott wanted to imbue her paintings with. And yet there's something, a small detail that I think makes her work different from Georgia O'Keeffe and in particular in this painting. And that is the fact that she includes this jade, jade plant in a pot. And this small detail, the fact that she's showing you this whole, this, the whole plant, the fact that she's showing you um, the pot to me is significant. Later on, Marion Dale Scott does make paintings of extreme close-ups uh, around 1939, much closer to what we imagine the paintings by George O'Keeffe to look like. But here, earlier on, she's showing you a little bit of context, and I think this is a, an, an important detail. She manages to um, have the pot echo the remaining of the composition. So this small circle at the very top that seems to emanate so much force is echoed in the round rim of the pot. And yet it, in some ways it seems a very mundane inclusion. But I think it speaks to Scott's thinking about uh, the role of women in society. Because after all, a pot in particular, a potted plant speaks to um, constriction, to being limited, to being detached from an environment, from the natural environment. It is to be removed from one place and be placed in a home, to be domesticated uh, and to be put to use in a very particular way. And I think that in this way, she's speaking to the role of women in society um, in this subtle and yet poignant way. Indeed, when she was asked decades later why she painted flowers, because she did paint flowers in the 30s all the way until the 1950s, uh, she simply answered, it was with the knowing that they could split rock. And I love that. I love that idea that something that is so common as a plant, something that is so familiar, you can almost forget that you have it in your home because like with the gene plant, you do not need to take care of it. And yet it is the source of all life. Thank you.